Weathering is an important part of the rock cycle because we've got to be able to break down pre-existing rocks into sediment. Sediment being the coarse grains and the fine grained pieces of rock that are moved and eroded and washed downstream and they become sedimentary rocks. Usually what we have at the beginning are igneous rocks, hard igneous rocks. And we have to break those apart in order to start to break them into smaller and smaller pieces. The first big component of that is called the mechanical weathering process where literally the rock is physically broken apart by processes at the earth's surface. We're going to demonstrate that today using ice and water which are very important pieces of the puzzle for weathering. We're going to have a milk jug which we're then going to cut basically in half and fill with plaster of Paris. You can do this at your home. Fill it with plaster of Paris. Here it's kind of, we've got a pink color, it kind of looks like granite. But what we've done is we've then taken a small balloon filled with water and we've actually submerged it in the plaster of Paris just long enough so that it hardens so we have a balloon full of water inside the plaster of Paris. And we've also done a, one that does not have a balloon. And we take these and we put them in our refrigerator back over here and we wait until the thing freezes. And what happens is, is that the volume expansion and contraction that occurs when water freezes, it turns to ice, there is a volume expansion. And when water melts from ice back to water, there's a volume contraction. And it puts physical stress on the inside of the rock. And what we see is we get a rock when we pull this thing back out of the refrigerator that basically has shattered. It's broken in half. So here here is our what's left of our balloon in here and, and what's left of our uh, you can see the hole where the balloon was but you can see it's broken in half it's it's broken in half and not only that it's blown out the top and bottom of this thing it's just from the intense pressure that that swelling uh, uh, formation of ice is put on the rock so if you can imagine this in the field you're walking along you see a big piece of granite and it's winter time and it freezes and then it breaks and now we've got surfaces of that we can start to weather even more. The more surface area we have, the more damage we can do to the rock. So I've got some sugar here and I'm going to take this sugar and demonstrate what happens once you get these rocks down to smaller pieces. And what happens is as these things start to erode, they start to move around, they weather further mechanically. We can put the sugar cubes, which you can see are fairly good sized sugar cubes, into a jar and we're going to abrade them. An abrasion is just the physical action of two clasps or two pieces of sugar rubbing together. We shake it very, very vigorously like this. What do we get? Well, first thing we get is a powder. We get a lot of the sugar that comes off and we get smaller and smaller pieces of sugar. These pieces of sugar are not only smaller, but the sharp edges of the sugar have now started to round off. And a lot of this stuff basically now has become powder. Now water is an extremely important mechanism in weathering, but it's not the only one. Another one is wind. And as a matter of fact, if we stood here long enough, I'm going to turn on my fancy fan, and we let the fan blow across, what's going to happen is all of this finer material is now starting to blow away and it's grating or it's abrading against the larger grains and continuing to weather and erode the grains off of, of the rock. So what we're ending up with is finer and finer sediment. And the finer the sediment, the easier it is for water to take that sediment and flow it into a river and that river may flow into an ocean and we redeposit that sediment as sedimentary rock. That's physical or mechanical weathering, but that's not the only kind of weathering that's important. If I take this steel wool and this copper wool, I can show you a different style of weathering that's also very important in the natural world called chemical weathering. Steel wool and copper are reactive to acids, just like many rocks are reactive to acids. And so what we've done to demonstrate weathering of steel wool and, and uh, copper wool is we've submerged them in vinegar solution. When this has been in here for about 
two days or so. And what we can see is that the metals within the steel wool and copper have reacted with the acids in much the same way that minerals within the rocks might react to weak acids that are generated from rainwater or from ice at the Earth's surface. And if we pull these out, what you can see is you can see that the copper is, has a, uh, uh, a scum, if you will, on it. It has a uh, sediment that's actually been generated from the copper. And actually, you can see how dark the, the fluid is. That's because all of this copper has been extracted and is now in the vinegar solution. And if we go over and look at the steel wool, it's covered in this red gunk. That is the mineral hematite. That's rust. And that's actually caused from the oxidation of the iron in the steel wool by the vinegar acid that we put it in. This happens in nature. As a matter of fact, granites contain a mineral called feldspar, which when it reacts with fluids breaks down into clay. And the breaking down of clay sort of unhinges the rock and it just sort of falls to pieces. And what you're left with is the other component of granite, which is quartz. That's why there's so much quartz down on the beach because quartz does not dissolve as readily as feldspar. So as you can see, both physical and chemical weathering processes that involve water, wind, and ice, and chemicals that are formed weak acids all together help break down rocks as a part of the rock cycle and set the stage for the deposition of sedimentary rocks.